In this video, we're going to be taking all of these parts and building it into this. What you're seeing here is a sort of mid to high end build guide. The stars of the show are the i5 11600K and an RTX 3060 Ti. Now I'm well aware of the GP shortages and I can only apologize, but I think this is a pretty interesting system, so let's get to building it. Now beyond the parts that I just mentioned, we're also gonna be using a B560 motherboard. I've done a video recently on testing uh, Z590C versus B560 and the, the differences between them. And while using this B560 board does mean that you cannot overclock your KSQ CPU, like I've said in that video, uh, the vast majority of people who have KSQ chips don't tend to actually overclock. So for those of you who don't, this is a great way to save a bit of cash. Now the board is a B560 Tomahawk from MSI. We also have 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz RAM, which technically voids the CPU warranty, but gives us a bit of extra performance that we can now use thanks to the B560 board. In terms of storage space, I'm keeping it pretty simple here. We have a single uh, one terabyte Gen 3 NVMe SSD that we'll be using for both our OS and our games. You can obviously go with a larger driver, smaller and a hard driver, any configuration you like, but this keeps it nice and simple and still within a reasonable budget. And then for the case, the thing we're gonna put all of this in, I'm using the Fantex P400A. This is a really nice case. Fantex in general are pretty easy to build in with a few nice touches, so that's what we're using here. We're also using a Corsair H100i Elite Capilex to keep the CPU cool, and a Corsair CX750F power supply to keep it all powered. So those are the parts, let's start building. The first thing you want to do is get your motherboard out of its box, and we're gonna install the CPU. Now you want to open the CPU cover using the arm on the right hand side, uh, sort of unhook it from the bottom, lift up the retaining plates and gently place the CPU down, aligning the gold triangle on the CPU with the little triangle on the socket. Once you're sure that it's seated nicely, you can then bring the retaining plate back down, hook the tabs under the locking screw and pull the arm back down. The plastic cover will pop off and you can move that out of the way. And as long as you've locked the arm under its little tab, that's the CPU installed. Next, we'll install the memory. Because we're only using two sticks of memory here, we want to use the recommended channels that it says on the little screen, uh, silk screen printing on the motherboard next to the RAM DIMM slots, which are the furthest away slots and the second closest. So you're gonna open the tabs on both sides of both of those sockets, line up the notch on the memory with the notch on the sockets, place it down and push firmly on both sides of the memory until you hear clicks from both sides. Repeat that for your second stick and that's our memory installed. Next up is installing our M.2 SSD. Now you can put this in any of the slots on the board and generally speaking, I would recommend putting it in the top slot. That's the one that generally makes the most sense. Although for me, I'm gonna actually put it in the middle slot as that leaves our top slot free if we want to add a Gen 4 SSD later. Either way, all you need to do is remove the two screws on the heatsink on either side, place the drive in at a slight angle and then flattening it down onto the standoff, remove the uh, sort of protective cover on the thermal pad, place the heatsink back down and screw those two screws back in and that's our drive installed. The last thing we want to do on our motherboard before we start thinking about our case is set up or install the CPU cooler bracket. The CPU cooler comes with a bracket that goes on the back of the motherboard and four little double-sided standoffs. So you need to put the brackets on the back, aligning the holes around the socket and screw in each one of those four standoffs. Once those are installed, that is our motherboard prepped and ready to, to use. So we're gonna put that to one side and start working on the case. You want to take both side panels off as that means we can get in and access everything easily. And then I generally like to install the power supply. 
In this case, we put it with the uh, power supply fan facing downwards. You'll also want to pre-attach the cables to the back of the power supply since this one is a modular unit. In our case, we want a PCIe connection for our graphics card, an 8-pin for our motherboard, and the 24-pin, as well as a SATA cable so that we can power up the cooler and the case uh, and the case fans that need it. So uh, once those are attached, you can then slide it in from the sort of off side uh, towards the back and put in the four screws around uh, each corner to hold it in place. I also like to pre-route some of the cables. So moving the eight pin for the CPU up to the top left hand side of the case, quite useful. Also the 24 pin can come through on the sort of center right and the uh, eight pins for your PCIe power connection, your graphics card can come through the small hole in the power supply basement so that that can be connected up later. Then it's time to install our motherboard. Now the case has all of the standoffs installed that we need. There's nine in total in a three by three grid pattern. And one of the nice things about these Fantex cases is that the center standoff and the one above it have a little lip on them so that when you go to put the motherboard in, you can effectively hang it or it holds it in place so that you don't need to do anything other than screw the screws in. So to install the motherboard, because it has an IO shield pre-installed, you place it down sort of IO, IO shield side first uh, towards the back of the case, hook it onto those standoffs, and then start installing all nine screws. You can then hook up the connections from the power supply as it's gonna be a bit more difficult once the cooler is installed. So that eight pin power connector up in the top left hand side, that'll clip into place. Same with the 24 pin on the sort of top center right. You'll also wanna connect up the USB 3 front panel header which is just below the 24 pin and any of the front panel case connectors like the HD audio on the bottom right and the front panel power and reset buttons which go on the bottom right of the board. Once that's all hooked up, we can get our cooler installed. Now you'll need to screw it into the top of the case with the eight screws and washers that come with your cooler. Takes a bit of effort, I know, but once it is installed, we can then feed all of the wires through to the back of the case, including the uh, wire that comes from the pump that powers it and acts as your lighting connection as well. We will want to plug in the sense wire, the little fan header to the motherboard, to the CPU fan header just by the RAM DIMM slots. And then we can put a bit of thermal paste on our CPU. You only need a small grain of rice sized amount. Then you can place the pump down onto it and use the four included thumb screws to tighten it all down. Since we're still on this side of the case, it's probably a good idea to install our graphics card. You want to remove the two screws and covers that are on the back of the case uh, to allow us to put our graphics card in, the one that's in line with the PCIe slot you're using and the one below it. You can then push the small locking tab on the PCIe slot down out of the way and then offer up the graphics card uh, into the slot, placing it firmly but not forcefully in place. Then uh, add the two screws to the back of the graphics card to hold it steady and connect your PCIe power connections. This card needs two eight pins, so you're gonna wanna hook up both that come on the same cable from the power supply. Then you want to turn the case around so that you can see the, the back side of it. And we're gonna need to hook up the control module for the cooler. You want to connect up both RGB headers from the fans and the fan headers too. Then connect the large uh, effectively plug from the, the pump units into the control module and then connect up both the USB 3 header from that or the USB 2 header from that module and the SATA power header to make sure it's all powered. You can then do a bit of cable management. Also plug in any of the case fans. In my case, I have a couple in the front, so plug those into the board and any other SATA power connectors that the case and fans need. After a little bit of cable management, you can then put the rear cover back on, put your front panel uh, or your front uh, window back on, and then you can boot up your system, get Windows installed and get gaming. 
Now let's take a look at how this thing performs. In 1080p gaming numbers, using high epic or ultra settings, uh, it actually does pretty well. Microsoft Flight obviously doesn't look all that fantastic on this graph at 43 FPS average, but it is Microsoft Flight, so that's actually pretty good. In Fortnite, we're looking at just over 190 FPS average, which is a lot better. Cyberpunk is just shy of 80, which, again, for a game like Cyberpunk, is pretty good. CSGO is in the 330 FPS region, which again is very good and Watch Dogs Legion is around 72 average. At 1440p we do drop a bit of performance as you would expect but not all that much. Microsoft Flight is now th uh, around 39 FPS average, so not all that big a hit. Fortnite has taken a pretty big jump down to 127, although that's still plenty good enough to play on a higher fresh rate 1440p display. There's also 51 FPS in Cyberpunk, which again, very good for that game. Uh, CSGO is around 300 and Watch Dogs Legion is around 57, so a very playable experience. When it comes to the CPU heavy workloads like Cinebench R20, it scores pretty well here. Just shy of 600 points in the single threaded score and a one point over 4300 in the multi threaded. When it comes to Blender, this is also pretty good as well, running 219 uh, seconds uh, with the BMW scene and 1113 in Gooseberry, which is around 18 and a half minutes. If you want to check out how these scores compare to the original review, feel free to take a look at that video link in the cards above. And taking a look at the Puget Bench suites for the Adobe CC apps, uh, again, these numbers are pretty good. The only one that's a little bit lower than the original run is Premiere, as that one has a lot of GPU acceleration, and I normally test the 3080. But overall, a very impressive system. So there you have a look at how to build a pretty decent and pretty powerful system that can manage 1080p and 1440p gaming just fine. Of course, like I said, while stock availability of the especially graphics card is still limited, if you can get your hands on the, this card and a system like this, you're gonna have a pretty good time. Of course, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of the system? Of course, the stock availability. Would you go with Andy's Ryzen instead or are you happy with this i5? Would you build the system yourself or would you go with something else entirely or maybe just upgrading your current rig? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. As always, I'm gonna leave links to all of the parts that I'm using in the description down below if you check out. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. Otherwise, there is a whole load of other links in the description you can check out from merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs, including ones that I've designed in Photoshop and Blender. Feel free to take a look. There's also a Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos, and of course, you support me directly as well, and a load of other links, including for places like Overclock UK if you're buying from there instead. Otherwise, I'll leave some more videos on the end cards for you to check out. And that's pretty much it from me. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.